I have a whole mindset that I'm working on getting really into for this rotation, so we'll talk about that at some point. But right now, Pons is hungry. Pons, are you ready to eat? It's actually kind of freezing in my apartment. Oh my god, that was a fly. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I um, just started my neuroblock today. I look ridiculous because it's cold in my apartment. And I wanted to make a smoothie, but I felt a little bit cold. So, I guess I shouldn't have made a frozen smoothie, but it is what it is. What are those little red things with the faces? Not a minion. Today I was in the epilepsy clinic. It was actually so cool. I was worried that I wouldn't like it. I feel like I wrote off neurology a little bit early on because I just never thought of myself as a neurologist. I don't know if that makes sense, but when you go to med school, you'll understand. If you're not yet in med school and you haven't seen all of those Dr. Glockum, Flockum, whatever his name is. If you haven't seen all of his TikToks that make fun of neurologists, then you won't understand. But I never thought of myself as a neurologist. I've had an interest in neurosurgery and maybe I had an interest in psych neuro back in college, but since starting med school, it hasn't really been on my list of specialties that I might be interested in. That being said, I am two rotations from the end of my clinical year, which means two rotations before I have to start studying for boards. I think at this point in the year, the most important thing is that I just try my best and try to remember that I just need to learn as much as possible. Most med students by this point in the year are pretty exhausted. And so really summoning the motivation to continue to try really hard, to put forth your best effort, to study really hard, it is at an all time low. Yeah, I don't know. I think neuro is gonna be cool. I think it's one of those subjects. the culprit. She was messing with my bathroom door. Oh, there she is. That scared the crap out of me. I thought somebody was like hiding in the bathroom. Pons, I'm trying to film a video here. I don't know. It's the start of a new block, which means I need to just set some ground rules for myself, go hard from the very beginning because otherwise it just won't get done. This is a short block, just four weeks. I don't know how long neuro is at other schools. I'm not sure all schools even have a neuro block. So I'm just gonna use it as an opportunity to learn as much as possible. And I'm really gonna lean into just having a really, really positive mindset because otherwise if I didn't do that, the next couple of months would be pretty difficult and they're gonna be difficult either way because hashtag med school. It's a little thick, I can't really, I was trying to be cute and yikes. I'm going to bed early tonight so I'm gonna put on my blue light blockers which I don't even know if they do anything. The jury's still out. Grind time. Did y'all just see that? That was like kind of crazy, no? Good morning, friends. Please ignore the dishwasher in the background and the fact that I'm literally throwing it back to middle school with my bisapelo. I ended up going to sleep later than I anticipated because I couldn't sleep because I was convinced that someone was trying to break into my apartment. In true crazy person fashion, um, I've convinced myself that someone's trying to break into my apartment. I'm going on a walk because now I'm so anxious I can't sleep. <laughs> It's almost midnight. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? I ended up leaving my apartment, even though that didn't really make sense since if someone was breaking into my apartment, they'd probably be coming through the door, maybe the window. I don't know. Anyway, I ended up leaving my apartment for a little bit because I couldn't sleep and I was getting so anxious. I think I lived on my own now for about a year, over a year. And at first I was a little bit nervous about living alone because I felt just like a little bit scared. But that's never happened to me before. I haven't been so scared that I couldn't sleep, which was a disaster. Right now I'm reviewing Central versus Peripheral Vertigo. That's what we're doing. I have my coffee. I had a little bit of yogurt for breakfast. At my school they give us a half day for a wellness day 
um, during every block, which is really nice. Unfortunately, my half day is today, which is only the second day of the block, and it's this morning, which is just kind of silly. Most blocks let you choose when to have your half day. Some blocks just schedule it for you during specific weeks, just to probably make it simpler for them. I'm having my half day on the second day of the rotation. I have a preceptor session at 1 p.m., and then I'll be going into the hospital probably until 5 for like the remainder of my half day of work. I really need to learn neuro. I've done five questions so far, and I'm pretty sure I've gotten four of the five wrong. On the one hand, it's kind of discouraging, like, dang, I really don't know any neuro. On the other hand, at least I know that I'm going to learn a lot. Just trying to think positive, trying to keep things positive around here. I don't deny that I could do some company. All my friends say, honey, just let him be. Now your perfume's stuck in my shirt. And there's an empty left in my bed. I don't know about you, but put you first. I bought some new flowers. Just want your time. I just want your time. Your time, oh, oh, oh time. I need your time. Three, six, five, twenty four, seven, I'll be fine. As long as you spend a little time. Just want your, just want your time. I just finished my afternoon preceptor session. I'm trying out this whole don't be scared to vlog outside thing. So now I'm on my way to clinic. I'm actually in the EMG lab this afternoon. So I looked it up, but I've already forgotten. And I don't know if anyone else does that, but I swear to God, my memory has somehow managed to get worse and worse over the years. I'm trying this whole don't care so much, go outside, vlog, show people what it's like to be outside, not just in my apartment. Honestly, give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate my effort. Just I'm trying my best, okay? I was in the EMG lab for all of two and a half hours just because I went in late given my afternoon preceptor session. But I got to see like a full evaluation of one patient whose chief complaint was bilateral lower extremity numbness. Noise is making it impossible to vlog. Welcome to New York City. Great. I honestly didn't understand a lot of what's going on given it was my first time in an EMG lab, but I'll just have to look it up later. The thing about outpatient clinic is that sometimes outpatient clinic, the hours are super long. Sometimes they're really short. It really just depends on the specialty. So it looks like for neuro, at least these past two days, I've had pretty short days and have been able to get home at a decent time. But tomorrow I actually have a full day, so we'll see how long that lasts. Hi, Ponzi. We go forever now. We go forever now. You know that I'm at your center. You would say you can do baby girl. You should already know. I can do better. I'm so in love with the chatter. I'm so in love with my little boo. It was written like a letter. Think I was born with the juice. Think I was born with the sauce. Think I was born a little crazy. Then I turned up to a boss. Got I gotta go and get it. I've been thinking a lot about balance in med school and what I do for self-care. A lot of it is intrinsic, like I've just been feeling like I really need to sit down and reflect on my priorities after finishing some really tough clinical year rotations, medicine, surgery, and some of it actually comes from hearing from some of you guys and you guys have questions about how to balance it all in med school. And I think right now I'm coming off of three pretty easy pass-fail weeks that allowed me to really realign and think
think about my priorities and I'm currently starting a new block. So I haven't yet really hit the ground running or been given a ton of responsibilities. Now, I hope you guys know that I don't have it all figured out in terms of self-care and trying to live my happiest, healthiest, most fulfilled, life while in med school. At this time, I've come up with like four things that have been really important to me. Studying, I know that seems weird, but wait for it. Studying, movement, mess in the move, and sleep. When I was thinking through my priorities, it felt weird to make studying a self-care, balancing it all priority, but the reality is that I'm a medical student and I'm in med school. And if I want to live a balanced life, that means that I also need to take care of things when they need to be taken care of. So I have definitely been guilty of procrastinating things, not studying as much as I knew I was capable of. I would put in long hours in the weekends leading up to an exam instead of kind of breaking Breaking up my studying and kind of studying more consistently throughout a block. And so when I was thinking through my priorities and what kind of habits I wanted to build, I knew that the foundation of that had to be in a good study routine and good study habits. It's going to be important for the rest of my life as a doctor to be reading up on what is happening in medicine because medicine is a field that is constantly changing and it's only going to get harder. I'm only going to have less time in residency. I'm only going to be challenged even more when I'm attending, whether that be because of other priorities that will take me away from just purely studying in the way that med school has allowed me to have a job that's purely studying. I don't know if that makes sense. The reality is for my own sanity, for my well-being, for my future career, it's really important to start building good study habits or rebuilding good study habits. I definitely had them at some point in high school, middle school, elementary school, college, but I lost them somewhere along the way in med school. Maybe it's because it's so all-consuming. In the end, I think studying is a big part of my balancing it all and it does wonders for my mental health, my emotional health, my sanity, my spirit spirit, my soul, my success in med school. That whole procrastinating, leaving things to the last minute, trying to cram for things, stresses me the heck out. And it's just not necessary. How do you eat an elephant? One bat at a time. At the end of the day, you have things that you need to get done. And the sooner you get those done, the sooner you can get on to balancing all the other aspects of your life that are important to you. And the less stressed and anxious you'll feel. The second thing I mentioned, was movement, my exercise, my dancing, my feeling good routines. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been more intentional about that. Spending time listening to music in the morning before going into the hospital gets me hyped, gets me fired up, gets me excited for the day. And then spending time like working out, exercising, getting my sweat on has also gotten me really excited for everything that I wanna do. It's had this weird effect on everything, all aspects of my life. When I'm moving my body and I'm feeling good, I'm just celebrating everything that I'm capable of doing, it makes me feel more motivated to engage in all the other aspects of my life kind of like the studying bit like once you get this one thing done it kind of transforms everything it, at least for me and the combination of me studying and exercising just a little bit each day nothing overwhelming it has this crazy trickle down effect on all aspects of my life the combination of those two things just gets me so pumped for my third priority which is making content for Mez on the move and the last thing which should be everyone's priority is sleep I know you guys know it's important but sleep is important I think I'm someone who wakes up on the right side of the bed most of the time no matter how much sleep she got not that I'm not saying that I don't wake up like ugh, but I definitely can get through a day on very little sleep and people won't question me about how much sleep I got. Well, besides looking kind of crazy. So I think as a result, I wasn't really valuing sleep, but I have noticed that not getting sleep does weird things to my body. I get these crazy breakouts and I never realized it, but you can tell, I think a few videos ago, you can see that I have crazy acne. And the only thing I've done differently is try to sleep like a regular seven to eight hours more consistently. And I have changed a couple things in my skincare routine, but you know, the sleep is really important because no matter what skincare routine I'm doing, if I go without sleep for a few days, I swear everything just like looks god awful. I even Googled it and I think it is a thing that sleep and the high cortisol in your la 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 la. Maybe it's like the 20 something crisis in me. Maybe it's realizing that I have a very difficult couple of years ahead of me. Regardless of what specialty I choose, residency is going to be challenging. And every resident I've ever spoken to has said that residency is more difficult and more time consuming than med school. Maybe it's just realizing all of those things that I've decided that I need to buckle down on my sleeping habits and have better sleep hygiene or whatever the kids are calling it these days. Too long didn't read. I have four main priorities. Of course, there are other things I want to do. I just haven't named those things as priorities just to give myself more leeway. I think when we pile on too many things, it becomes easier to see a bunch of shortcomings. And if I just focus really hard on the four things that are my top priority, then if I'm not like eating the best or reading as many books as I want, I don't beat myself up about it. So that's my advice. I would say make a very short, 
short, short, short list of priorities and then try to pursue those. It's hard to have it all in med school, but I do think balance is possible. And I think in order to find balance, you really need to define the crap out of your priorities and then uh, pursue them to the best of your ability. Don't overextend yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. And uh, every little thing will be all right. I gotta study. I'll talk to you guys soon.